we um, are going to be for this calling in Luke chapter 2. Um, recently, Brother Ricky referenced the text where Joseph and Mary um, left Jesus behind in Jerusalem after the feast. Um, and it spurred some thoughts that I wanted to call you up higher with today. I want to read this account. It's Luke 20, uh, I'm sorry, Luke 2, 41 through 52. It says, Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover, and when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed, and his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. I wanted to preface this a little bit so that the, mainly so that God is not represented here. Um, I'm pretty confident that everyone here is seeking the Lord diligently and has forsaken all to follow Christ and is walking by faith. But I know that you guys are not the only ones that hear these things. And so I wanted... I just want to be really careful with my words and how I'm presenting this. But when I make this parallel, um, I'm not speaking of someone who has a casual approach toward the Lord's Christ. This is not someone who lives sloppily. Um, Not someone who can just easily forget Jesus. And we know that um, we know we can consider what we do know about Joseph and Mary. They were handpicked by God to raise Jesus. They were excellent parents. And we recall from other accounts in the scriptures, they went to great lengths to protect the Christ child. They weren't being negligent. And it's important to remember that as we go through this. Um, So with that in mind, I wanted to use this opportunity to encourage the saints with this record. That if you've ever found yourself in this state that um, you realize in a certain area where maybe just in the course of living, um, somehow you've kind of left Jesus out. It's, it's not hopeless. <laughs> you can go back and find him. Amen. Joseph and Mary didn't realize that they left without Jesus. It was not intentional. They assumed he was with the family, and from their viewpoint, why wouldn't he be? It wasn't like Jesus was rebellious. He's never given them any reason to think that he would have been somewhere else. Um, he, um, he did stay behind in Jerusalem, but he was not being rebellious, and they were not being careless. Mm-hmm. We, can, I, we can definitely learn some things from this account. If we are honest with ourselves, I'm sure that we could all say at some point, We have found where we've left Jesus behind. Again, I'm talking to believers who want to please the Lord. So it probably was not intentional. Sometimes just the mundane course of living in the world can dull you just long enough for you to assume that Jesus is still in your company when in reality you've gone off without him. Um, Considering where they were, they were at the feast of the Passover. They were doing a godly activity. They were busy getting ready to go home. You know, um, and sometimes, pretty soon, you realize we've gone a whole day, and it hits you, where's Jesus? Is Christ here with me and what I am engaged in at this moment? Um, and just to direct this a little bit more specifically, I wanted to give a very short testimony to kind of tie this in of what I'm trying to convey. Um, 
I had an outline for this calling done by Thursday. And then I was tempted think, to think, I'm, this isn't calling the brethren up higher. So I wasn't sure if I was going to continue with this or not. But the Lord's manner is he always makes you first a partaker before you share something that you've prepared. Um, Sister Barb and Sister Tasha and I went this weekend. It was very last minute. We just learned about this um, homeschooling conference in Springfield. And um, I hate to say it, but usually when there's something that's, quote, Christian, you don't go expecting to receive a whole lot. I, I don't like that it's like that, but it seems like your expectations are just not very high a lot of times. But this was very, very enlightening. The speakers were very good. And in fact, one of the men that we listened to basically preached <laughs> a couple of both times he spoke that we heard him. And um, anyway, over the course of the conference, I realized that there were areas in my homeschooling where I left Jesus behind. And it wasn't intentional. I mean, it was very intentional. This is a very intentional thing. Mm -hmm. I want to raise my children mainly to know Christ. Amen. And so I had the best intentions. And when I saw it, it really broke my heart. And um, these, were the, these, these are the sensitive areas I'm talking about when I'm saying leaving Jesus behind. I'm not talking about base stuff. I'm talking mm -hmm. about things that the Lord directs his people in. Mm -hmm. So I was able to kind of identify, thinking about how Mary and Joseph would have felt after doing this. And um, I, I was spiritually humbled mm -hmm. by this. And even though it wasn't, I mean, I was thinking, how could I have done that in this area? How did I do that? But it may not have been intentional, but it doesn't excuse it either. So I wanted to emphasize in this account, though, it was a rare occurrence. <laughs> this was only accounted for one time. And this wasn't like a normal everyday circumstance where Jesus was left here and he was left over there or um or that joseph and mary continued to like have some kind of failure or something like that it wasn't like that and it was um i doubt that they ever left jesus again <laughs> without knowing and um and another thing to point out is it only took one day of traveling before they realized that jesus was not among the group so they were pretty quick to perceive that so getting back to the text here, um, Mary and Joseph, upon learning of his absence, they immediately sought after him. So even though they might have unintentionally left him, going back for him was very intentional. Um, they had only traveled one day, but it took three days to find him. In the meantime, Jesus was in the temple with the doctors, both hearing and answering. And when Mary found him, she was, she was upset and um, I just wanted to read real quick that response. It's 48 and 49 again. She says, um, Thy mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said, How is it that ye sought me? Was not that I must be about my father's business? And it was almost as if Jesus' reply was like she should have known where she could have found him this whole time. <laughs> He was about his father's business. Amen. If you want to find Jesus, you got to go to where he's working. Amen. Amen. She didn't. Um, she didn't understand the Lord's words at this point, but I. She kept them in her heart, and I know that they were revealed to her later. Um, so, if we find ourselves in this dilemma, hightail it back to the Lord. Hightail it back to the last place where you were with Christ. And while we realize what we've done, we don't want to get bogged down and begin to focus on the shortcoming yeah. of, of what we've done. Joseph and Mary didn't throw a pity party for themselves and say, we're not worthy to be Jesus' parents anymore and just quit. Um, godly sorrow works repentance. Yeah. And we have an advocate. Amen. They went back and found him. They knew they were the stewards of raising the Son of God. They protected and they increased what God had put in their hands to do. The work of God was the point. Um, now we do have the Holy Spirit, and we, and we do understand 
that Jesus is doing the will of the Father. That's what he does. He only does the will of the Father. And we know where to find him. <laughs> if you want to find Jesus, we got to be where he's working, and that's in the body of Christ. Yeah. And specifically, to make it kind of a little more applicable here, especially in the assembly, in the, where the body is, this is where he does a lot of ministering to us. Um, the parallel kind of breaks down a little bit because Jesus continues to be subject to his mother and father, or Joseph and Mary, and um, goes with him. But now we follow Christ. <laughs> we want to be so sensitive in our faith that we're able to hear his voice and to be led by his eye and to detect that we are still remaining in his presence. Um, someone once said, I don't remember if it was Brother Given or Brother Ricky, he was talking about our hearts. They're like a, filled with all these little rooms. And we want to make sure that Christ is present in all of them. Um, that's what salvation is doing in us. So we become closer and closer to glory and become more and more like Christ. We're being changed from glory to glory, but are eagerly anticipating the day when we will be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. Amen. So now Brother Judah will come and lead us in song. <laughs>